Uh, hi, my name is William Gu, and I did my presentation on improving CAPTCHAs. So CAPTCHA is an acronym for a completely automated Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. Now, it's used in many places across the web to prevent unwanted, unwanted bots from like accessing websites, such as Google and Yahoo. Like They don't want bots to create accounts to send spam all over the internet, so they employ CAPTCHAs to stop them from doing so. Now, um, the spammers, they still want to send spam, so they're like always improving their bots and helping their bots find new ways of cracking the CAPTCHAs. So it's an ongoing battle between the spammers and the developers of CAPTCHA to like see who can best the other. Now, I I'm sure none of you like doing CAPTCHAs, and the researchers at um, Newcastle University also thought so. So they wanted to a they asked themselves, how are today's CAPTCHAs broken? So they took a bunch of CAPTCHAs, like Google's reCAPTCHA and the CAPTCHAs of Yahoo and MSN, and they tested them against their own little programs. So they devised a step-by-step -step process on how to defeat the CAPTCHA. So the first step is separating foreground from background. And as you can see in all these CAPTCHAs, the background is just white, and the foreground is like letters of some color. So that was really easy. The second step would be segmentation, and that's the harder part. At first, they did vertical segmentation, which means they just draw vertical lines down the CAPTCHA. And at first, it worked rather well, but as time went on, the CAPTCHAs got smart as well, and they started slanting the little things. So vertical segmentation didn't work as well. So after that, they devised a new method of segmentation, which is the snake method. The snake method, like, you start with like a little bit, and then it moves down, and when it, when it encounters something, it'll move in a certain direction. So this method was a lot better, but it still like would derp up every once in a while. Okay. <laughs> yes. There's an internet slink here. Now, okay, so it, since it was able to defeat so many CAPTCHAs, the developers of CAPTCHA also decided to like one up the little like spammers. So they put in arcs. Now the spammers were like, ha, arcs. So then they devised new ways of defeating the arcs. So like they noticed that arcs would never actually be like un like overlapping on the letters, or if they did, it would be like it still wouldn't be like in the same like line as the capture like normal capture itself. So they devised ways like if it's above to the certain like to the side or below, they would classify it as an arc and the like bot would just completely ignore it. So with that, they were, the bots were able to get an astounding success rate in defeating captures. Um, vertical segmentation combined with a dictionary task managed a 94% accuracy at rate, which is actually really high, considering bot, like, botnets have million, like, um, thousands of nodes, which can create thousands of counts every second. So a dictionary attack is um, they take the captcha, like it might have, they might not be able to like decode the entire captcha. They might like not know certain letters, so they'll take what they know and like match it up to words in the dictionary. And if they find any like close matches, they'll just stick it in there. Now, um, they also use the snake method, which they just segment it using like the little snake thing, like the game of snake. I'm sure you're all like aware of that. Yeah. So they use that. Yeah. They used the snake method, they got a 99% success rate, and each, each, like, each CAPTCHA took between 3 and 5 seconds to solve, which is really fast. Now, they also noticed several things. The background and the foreground were incredibly easy to separate. Um, segmentation was relatively hard, but still rather easy. It was the longest part in the process, but it was still rather easy. And Every letter or character had a set number of pixels, so they can actually easily identify what letter it is. Now, that's a bad thing, so they suggested that to the developers of CAPTCHA. Anyways, like, we also have CAPTCHAs for like, visually impaired people, such as the audio CAPTCHAs. Now, these CAPTCHAs, um, they're, ra they're rather slow. Um, it takes an average person around 30 seconds to solve one. And on average, they have um, a success rate of 70%, so you might not even get it right the first time. Now, that is bad, so the accessibility is an issue right there. 
And the bots, they were able to match average humans with an even greater accuracy. So this capture failed since it was trying to differentiate between humans and computers. And they thought humans were computers more often than computers, which is rather sad. Now, like, we also have new methods of CAPTCHA that don't involve text recognition. So we have things like Microsoft's Acero project. They ask computers to identify, like, they, they ask users to look at photos and identify which are cats and which are dogs. Now at first this is going to be really effective because you can't use like segmentation or anything to take apart little cats and dogs. <laughs> yeah. So like that presents a problem, but spammers can still get through it by cataloging each image. I mean, there are only a finite amount of images in the database. So if they like have enough manpower, money, or time to just go in and catalog every image, they can have a 100% foolproof way to defeat Acera. Now, and that's a rather bad thing. We also have Facebook's social authentication device. They ask you to like, they show you a few pictures of one of your friends, and they'll ask you to identify who it is. Now, this is pretty good if you have a Facebook account, otherwise it's not very good. And it also doesn't really work if you're one of those people who adds everyone they see online. Like, some people have 2,000 or so friends, I don't know why, and I'm sure they don't know every one of them. So if, they, if Facebook asks them to identify some guy who they don't know, they're going to be locked out. So yeah. And another issue with the Facebook's social authentication CAPTCHA is privacy because it must access your friends list and your friends might not, they might also not want to be like put online in some database. So yeah. But like it also has a lot of good sides such as it also, it not only thwarts bots but it also thwarts human hackers as well. Human hackers, if they don't know this, if they don't know you or like they don't know your friends, they can't get through this Facebook social authentication capture, and that's a really good thing. Now, um, uh, there are also other alternatives to captures, such as a honeypot. Now, a honeypot, as we've learned, is a system that like tempts other like hackers to attack it, and then it gains information on those hackers without giving the hackers any actual like valid information. Now, this like honeypot capture sort of works like that, but instead of a system, it's a website, or rather, a field. You know those fields with like, they ask you to input your email, username, password, all that? Well, uh, website developers, they can put in an invisible field in the HTTP, and it'll be invisible to humans, but because bots don't actually view the web page itself, they view the HTTP, HTTP, HTML code, they'll actually see this field, and it'll just scream, fill me out. Lols to the bot. So the bot will be tempted to fill it out. And once it fills it out, the website can tell that the bot is a bot because it actually saw the invisible field that humans can't see. So that's also another way to like, find out which one's a bot and which one's a human. Now, like all of these captures, they also have two other weaknesses. One is like for Microsoft's at the Zero project and Facebook's social authentication project. They can all be like bypassed through like guessing. Since botnets contain thousands of nodes, they can just throw in guesses. And even if you have a 25% success rate, a t like a fourth of all the spam will still get through, and that's still not good enough. So um, another way to defeat this is to like have a device that records your success rate. I mean, if it's if you're a human, it should be relatively high. But if you're just gonna guess randomly, your success rate will be rather low. So that's also another like, decent way to find out which one is a bot and which one is not a bot. And another like, really large problem with CAPTCHA is some spammers, they try to like, use relay devices. Like, they will relay the CAPTCHA to people in like, third world countries that'll solve the CAPTCHAs. Like, some websites, they'll sell CAPTCHAs, without, like, they'll solve a thousand CAPTCHAs for seven bucks. So, like, if you pay a few bucks, you can have a ton of new like email accounts, and like, there's actually no good way of defeating that because 
it's aimed to differentiate between humans and bots, not humans and humans that are being paid to solve the captures. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not a very good thing. So there's actually no way to defeat that, but you can still try. We still haven't found a way yet, but we'll try. Now, we can also try to like have an over-engineered solution where you can have your captcha ask you to like ask the user to move a colored thing to another colored area, and it'll like spammers will still be able to like defeat this version, but it'll take a lot more time. And if you make the spammers not want to spend time attacking your website, then well they'll just go attack someone else's website, and that's a good thing for you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No. Ack. Like, despite this endless line of improvements for CAPTCHAs, spammers will probably always find a way in through it, and eventually, like, accessibility will become an issue. Like, with audio CAPTCHAs, people are already filling them 30% of the time. And that's not very good, because you want to let your regular, like, users in. And even if some bots get through, that's all right. But like, if you're blocking out a large amount of your users, that's really bad. So eventually, like, computers might be able to like solve captures at a better rate than humans. And the accessibility, like, if you want to keep your like integrity high, you're gonna have to trade accessibility for it. And that'll defeat the purpose of the capture. And capture will like just not be something that you should use to protect your website. Um, some argue that CAPTCHAs right now are already like kind of an insult to the users. Like the website developer is pushing the load of security onto the users when they should be like could be using different methods of blocking out bots. But like everyone has their own opinion, so yeah. Um, it's an ongoing cat and mouse game between <laughs> the spammers and the developers of CAPTCHA. Oh so. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I'd just like to point out one thing about that Facebook social authentication thing. One time I changed my password and it asked me for that. And the, uh, the problem I encountered was that my friends always thought it was really funny to, to take pictures of walls and <laughs> cereal boxes and then say it's them and their pictures and things like that. So then I, I was at, it was showing me pictures of cereal boxes and walls and asking me which of my friends <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> so, one thing we'll have a question. Where's Newcastle? Uh, Newcastle is in the United Kingdom. Very good. <laughs> and there are actually two Newcastles in the United Kingdom. So, which one are you talking about? But I want to ask you that question. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, okay, so, so a question for everybody. Want to just try, try to trace back the bots and, and find them and take them out? <laughs> okay. Or, oh. Because you know you said very well they make mistakes, so, 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 so that may be a good way to try to find out who's a bot, right? Because they're making mistakes. So why not why not just as I said, trace back and kill them? Yeah, they can do that. But um, the bots are actually like they're still like on someone else's computer, so you would end up like locking the guy who has the infected computer out as well. So that might not be the best solution. Okay, all right. And and, and can you always trace back to, to to find the source? Do you think? Um, it might change their IP or something, so yeah, it might not always be possible. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thanks.